Hi everyone, my name is uh, Martin. Thanks for coming to my presentation. I'll be talking uh, about uh, speech analysis uh, techniques. Uh, so first, uh, short info about me. I'm doing iOS development at uh, Netcetera. It's a Swiss software company. Uh, I'm also blogging in my spare time about uh, conversational interfaces, machine learning. Uh, this is my blog, martinmitrevsky.com. Uh, I also have a Facebook page about iOS development where I share uh, links from other blogs and stuff like uh, that might be interested for other developers. And uh, you can find me on Twitter by the handle Mitrovsky. So uh, basically, I'm not a soldier, but I will try to mobilize you to start using conversational interfaces in your apps if you uh, haven't already. Uh, so first, I want to talk about uh, the evolution of the user interfaces. Uh, we know that uh, people and computers uh, speak different languages. We are communicating with uh, words and sentences, while the computers are more into uh, ones and zeros. So in order to bridge this uh, gap in the communication, we have the graphical user interfaces. Uh, the first one that was uh, introduced was uh, the command line interface or the terminal. Uh, some of us are still using it for some programming tasks. Uh, then to bring computers closer to the masses, uh, the desktop was invented, uh, which uh, requires some learning curve, but uh, again, it made it more accessible to uh, everyone. Then we had the mobile devices revolution with a multi-touch interface, uh, and that also made, uh, uh, made uh, closer to the whole people these, uh, these technologies. Uh, but uh, what if we don't even need a user interface at all? Uh, what if we can use our voice, uh, which is the most simple and most natural way uh, to give commands to someone? So we are doing this in our uh, communication with other humans, so why can't we do this uh, with uh, machines? So uh, why? Well, this idea is not that uh, new, but uh, it's uh, still not taking off really, really good. And uh, the reason for this is that uh, Language is very complex. It's complex even uh, in our interactions, and you can imagine how difficult it is for computers to really understand uh, what we are trying to say. So for example, we have ambiguity. So someone can uh, say something, but he meant something else. Then we have uh, punctuation. Even a small comma can completely uh, change the meaning of a sentence. Uh, then you have something like figurative speech. We are using metaphors or oxymorons or something else that uh, might infer uh, implied something else. Uh, then we have a context. In order to really understand what someone is trying to say, uh, you have to know who is this person, what are his beliefs, what was previously said uh, in a conversation. So that adds to the uh, complexity of uh, this challenging task. Uh, then you have uncertainty. You can encounter some unknown word uh, which you don't know uh, what it means and you might guess. And then you have some implications, something that uh, can be inferred from uh, what, uh, uh, what the people are saying but not directly, uh, it's not directly said. So having this, uh, all these factors uh, makes uh, natural language understanding one of the most complicated uh, tasks in uh, computer science. So natural language uh, processing uh, is the subfield of artificial, uh, artificial intelligence uh, that uh, <laughs> tries to uh, tackle this, uh, this uh, complex task. Uh, so uh, let's uh, introduce ourselves to some basic concepts of natural language processing. Uh, the first one is uh, now I'm giving a talk about uh, speech analysis uh, techniques at mobilization. So uh, what I'm saying here, so uh, we need, uh, as a, if we have a computer, we need to uh, 
get few things that are important for the computer in order to execute uh, this action. So uh, first, we need to know what's the goal of the sentence, what I'm trying to do. In this case, I'm trying to give a talk. So uh, that would be my intent. So this is in natural language processing called uh, intent. Then uh, we need to figure out in this intent uh, the parameters of this action. So I'm talking about uh, speech analysis techniques. So this is the subject of my presentation and uh, this is one kind of an entity. We can have also uh, different kinds of entities. So for example, I'm doing this now, which is a time entity and uh, also the, the place entity at this uh, great conference. So uh, then if I say something about, I will share some insights about them, uh, you can automatically infer that uh, I'm talking about the uh, speech analysis techniques, but for the computers, uh, it's not that simple to extract this information. Uh, and in natural language processing, this is called uh, a context. Okay, uh, so let's see how we can add voice to our applications. So what we need to do first. Uh, first, uh, we need to create some agent that, that will represent our application. Uh, and we need to train this agent with a certain domain knowledge which is specific to our application. So for example, if I'm building a grocery list, uh, and this grocery list needs to understand uh, whether I want to add products to the list, whether I want to mark them as bot, or maybe I don't need them anymore and I, I'm removing them, then I have to train uh, this agent with that knowledge. After I do this, uh, since I want to use this in mobile applications, I have to provide some kind of an interface uh, to this agent. So usually you will do multi-platform because currently that's a must and you probably will expose this via a REST interface like a JSON response or something like that. Uh, but you can also do a mobile framework that will uh, do this offline on the device. Uh, then, when you uh, have this uh, trained and integrated in your app, uh, you have to do the speech recognition. So this is the process of converting the uh, spoken phrase, what the user has said, to a machine-readable text. Uh, and uh, we need this text in order to uh, analyze it with uh, our algorithms to extract what we actually need. Uh, and then we are going in this intent detection part that we saw in the previous slide. We say, what's the intent of this uh, user? Uh, what are the values of that intent? Uh, and based on that uh, information that we get, we can uh, execute the user's request. And this is the place where we are doing our application logic. Okay, so uh, what can you use? What is out there currently? There are many solutions. Uh, I've tried to summarize them uh, in this figure where uh, the y-axis represents the ease of integration and uh, how much you need to do in order to integrate uh, the technology in your application. Uh, and then on the x, Axis, uh, I've uh, uh, is going from uh, non-flexible, how flexible it is for uh, customization, to uh, flexible where you can uh, do anything you you like uh, with the app. Uh, so, as it's uh, accustomed with Apple technologies, they fare pretty well in the not flexible uh, part of the of this graphic. Uh, so the first one is uh, SiriKit, uh, you probably have heard of it, uh, it's uh, from last year's WWDC. Uh, the integration is easier, we will see all of those uh, solutions in the next slides. Uh, but uh, for SiriKit the integration is uh, easier but it doesn't allow you much flexibility. Uh, the Core ML which is below it. Uh, is uh, this new machine learning uh, framework. Uh, this one is uh, both uh, not that flexible and uh, also harder to integrate. We'll see why uh, later. Then in the perfect spot uh, in this graphic is probably the 
easy and flexible section, so you want something that's easy to integrate, but it also allows you uh, flexibility to customize uh, your uh, training bot or agent to do uh, your application's needs. Uh, and then, if that even doesn't work for you, you can always do it by yourself, which is the hardest but the most flexible solution. Uh, it's also the most expensive one because in order to do these things properly, you need a lot of data, you need uh, really sophisticated algorithms. Uh, and uh, it, uh, but you can, the good thing is that you can do anything you, you want. You can tailor it per your uh, business. <coughs> okay, so let's f uh, start with the easiest one. Uh, so as I've mentioned, Siri Kit, new framework from Apple that uh, enables your app to provide functionality to the Siri application. So everything is happening uh, in the Siri context uh, and your app just gets called. You get uh, called by the operating system to perform some action and then just uh, provide the results to the user, but your app is, is not started. So here, Apple does all the steps uh, that we saw in the previous slides. Uh, so it does the speech recognition part, uh, it transcribes the, the text uh, from spoken phrase to human uh, readable text, like this here in the, in the slide. Uh, it also does the natural language understanding. So Siri tells you these are the entities, this is the intent of the user, and you just need to implement uh, your application's logic. So while that looks perfect, uh, it's uh, a bit restrictive to only certain domains. So uh, there is a domain, for example, for payment, domain for ride booking, uh, domain for uh, creating lists and uh, similar, but it's only, I think, around 10 domains. Uh, and if your app is not uh, performing an action in those domains, then uh, Siri Kit is really uh, useless for you. So you cannot make uh, uh, use of it. And uh, that's a bit uh, problematic here. So how do you implement uh, Siri Kit? Uh, well, it resolves around three basic steps. Uh, the first one uh, is resolve. Uh, this is the place where the uh, user, after the user is telling the phrase, if they missed a parameter, so for example, let's say the user wants to uh, book a ride. So if they say, I want to go to Paris, then uh, Siri Kit, your app will resolve that uh, you need the starting location property. And uh, in this step, you can tell Siri, oh, wait, I'm missing some information. And uh, this is the starting location. And then Siri will ask this uh, question to the user and provide you in the callback the missing value. Uh, after everything is resolved and we have enough information, we are uh, uh, giving some suggestion. For example, if it's a ride, we want to give a suggestion that uh, we, we can offer you this ride from here to here, coming in, let's say, 10 minutes for this price. Uh, and then this is the confirm step, where the user has to confirm that uh, this ride is OK for me and I want to reserve it. Uh, and after the user confirms uh, the, the action, then we go in the handle step. Uh, and this step just um, executes the action. So here you are doing the request uh, to your backend and uh, do everything uh, you need here. So uh, this is how it looks like. So on the left figure, we have uh, booking a ride uh, use case where the user says, can you, can you find me a ride from Paris, Paris to the Big Apple? And then we haven't provided whether we want a taxi or a bus or a plane or whatever. And then they ask this information using the resolution method. Uh, and then after the user provides this, we provide some UI. And you can see here that uh, Siri automatically inferred, uh, inferred that uh, when we said Big Apple, we are thinking about New York. So you can teach Siri, uh, you can customize it uh, 
to uh, recognize some synonyms uh, and uh, over time it will start to recognize them. So uh, this is because it feels more natural to use something than uh, otherwise we are too official for, for some things. And uh, in order to do this, uh, there is something called uh, global vocabulary in Siri, uh, which uh, does these things. And uh, when the user confirms, uh, it's a car scheduled and uh, the user expects uh, they're right. There are also some other examples. So, uh, for example, this is a grocery list where you can uh, mark items as completed. You can add them, remove them, and so on. Uh, so, uh, that was with uh, SiriKit, uh, it, uh, it had its restrictions, uh, first our app is not even started, we are just making Siri a favor to execute uh, the application, uh, we want to provide uh, an interface uh, which is available while the users are using our application. Uh, so, uh, next we have uh, Google's dialogue flow. Uh, it changed its name a week ago. Previously, it was called uh, API AI. Uh, and this is a natural language understanding platform which uh, you, can, you have a website, web application, where you uh, create an account. Uh, you create uh, agents. So uh, agent represents uh, your app in this case. Uh, you create agents and you create intents for uh, those agents. So if we have uh, this example with the grocery list, if we have an agent called grocery list, uh, its intents would be adding products to the grocery list, removing products to the gross from the grocery list, marking them as completed and uh, so on. Uh, and then this is how the user interface uh, looks like. Uh, we are creating this intent add product and uh, we are training the agent with, with providing uh, as many examples as possible which are valid to our use case. So we are uh, saying uh, in a lot of different ways how to add products in a grocery list. And uh, having as many examples as possible makes uh, Siri uh, makes a dialog flow uh, to learn uh, and to respond to even different uh, previously unknown sentences. So uh, it's uh, using their machine learning algorithms. Uh, even if you say something that uh, was uh, not heard before, so if it's not trained with that sentence, it can infer this and. Uh, resolve the uh, intent in a proper manner. Uh, and uh, here with the yellow color, we are uh, marking the, the products that will be added from the, to the list and with the orange one that uh, should be uh, removed. So uh, another cool thing is that uh, with this, this service is available as a REST service, so it's completely free and you can integrate it on any platform. And uh, another cool thing is that after you publish your app and users start using your app, if you haven't trained it uh, in a proper way and users start saying sentences that you didn't have in mind when you were training the engine, uh, there is this training section where you can see all the unresolved entities and mark everything uh, as needed and based on that, retrain the model, and uh, this is automatically available for all the users of the app. So you don't need to do an apl application update. You can do this on the backend, and uh, all the infrastructure, the data storage, everything is handled on API AI side. So it's uh, really useful. Uh, so if you want to integrate it in an application, uh, here we have a user input, it goes to the phone, the phone records this, uh, it does speech recognition. So uh, here we'll be using, since we don't have uh, Siri, we are using uh, a framework called Speech. It's also uh, announced the same time as uh, Siri Kit was announced. This is the underlying engine uh, that uh, Siri uses in order to do the transcriptions. Uh, and. Uh, with this framework, we are just uh, converting uh, everything to plain text. 
and we take this text and we're sending this to Dialogflow. And then Dialogflow do, does its thing based on the training we have uh, provided. It returns the intents and entities in a JSON format. We are persisting them either in a service or in a server or locally and then presenting them to the user. So it's a pretty simple integration. And uh, I will show you now a demo of an app that we did uh, with this intents. So uh, yeah, probably like this because uh, so you can hear it. Can you hear it? OK. So I'm adding items. Then I want to mark them after I mark bought them. Bananas and milk. Uh, and then I want to pay this. You see there is a. To pay now. And now we have a master pass integration where we just uh, have to enter password. But uh, that's also not the point, because uh, we want to use uh, lose everything that's uh, non-conversational. So uh, our goal is to have uh, a total experience without doing any interaction. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, we are looking for ways. So there are ways. Uh, biometric ways to do authentication so the user can identify uh, himself without uh, typing anything. So we are experimenting now with uh, uh, the way you hold your phone. Uh, uh, using the accelerometer, uh, it uh, gives an indication whether you are the person that, uh, that holds it because everyone has different uh, motion. Uh, and also uh, the voice itself might be the way of authentication. So when I say something like, I want to pay now, uh, the engine should recognize that this is me talking, not someone else. And uh, then you have also the face ID from Apple. So maybe even the face or uh, either one of them or combination of those might be enough to uh, pay without having to enter the password. So this is probably uh, in the future where you have complete end-to-end -end shopping uh, without even uh, touching anything. Uh, I mean, without even touching your phone. Uh, so that was with uh, Dialogflow. A uh, similar uh, product is uh, Facebook's uh, Wit AI. It's uh, also a, a natural language understanding platform. It offers roughly the same uh, feature features as um, Dialogflow. Uh, you can do the training in a similar way, where uh, you provide sentences, uh, you define intents, uh, you mark them. Uh, here you have uh, pro product roles, entity roles. Uh, and on API AI you, or Dialogflow, you had to specify a different entity for the add product or remove product. So all in all, it's uh, pretty similar. Uh, it has an iOS SDK as well. And here uh, in the iOS SDK, uh, the speech recognition is already integrated. Uh, so you don't have to worry about the speech framework. It's already implemented in this uh, iOS SDK. So uh, if uh, these approaches with uh, natural language understanding platforms don't work for you for some reason. Maybe you don't want to depend on uh, external service, or maybe you want to do this completely offline without uh, uh, needing to connect to a REST service. Uh, then you might also look for other solutions. Uh, one of them might be Core ML. So, this, uh, this is the new machine learning uh, framework that uh, Apple announced uh, this year. Uh, so uh, let's see how we can do this. Uh, we can do, uh, for example, sentiment analysis uh, with Core ML. Sentiment analysis is a subfield of uh, artificial intelligence that tries to classify opinions on uh, either positive or negative, so it gives them bias. It gives a bias to a, to a statement. So uh, this might be useful for a voice interfaces uh, where you have some chatbots and they have to, uh, instead of doing this manually, they can automate uh, this with uh, such an engine. Uh, so how CoreML works? 
CoreML, uh, in order to integrate it properly, you will need uh, two steps. So the first step uh, is the machine learning step. And uh, here, probably, you will not be able, only if you're a developer, you will not be able to do this by yourself. You will need a data scientist, a researcher, uh, that will find the proper data set, uh, which will be used to train the model. Then you, he needs to split the data into a testing set and a training set. Then uh, it uh, also needs to use a framework that will uh, learn, uh, that will use this algorithm, that will provide some algorithms to the data set uh, and uh, create a model. When you have this model in one of the popular machine learning frameworks, uh, then we can use Apple's Core ML tools, which are basically just Python scripts uh, that uh, convert what we have in the machine learning uh, environment to something that uh, can be easily integrated uh, in an iOS application. So uh, here, uh, for example, S SK Learn is one of the popular ones for text analysis. Uh, you can use, for example, uh, Keras as well. There are a few others. So I think there are six uh, machine learning frameworks. And uh, the cool thing about this is that you can reuse something that uh, has been developed in academia for many years. You can take this model and then uh, directly integrate it to, uh, iOS, to an iOS application. So basically, Core ML model is the glue that uh, connects these two different parts. On one hand, we have uh, the machine learning uh, part. On the other hand, we have uh, the iOS part where we do the actual development of, of an application. Uh, when you integrate such model uh, in an iOS application, Xcode will uh, automatically generate uh, interface to this class, so it will generate code, and uh, you can directly just load the model and uh, make predictions. So it's really easy for integration. The, the first step is the harder part here. Uh, so for example, if we want to do sentiment analysis, uh, we will... Uh, create the model, test it, uh, probably we'll do some TF-IDF. Uh, this is an algorithm that we'll see shortly. Uh, we'll do the training, uh, integrate everything in the iOS application, and then when the user says something, we will take the input, compute uh, this TF-IDF algorithm uh, values for the words in the review, uh, in the movie review, send this in a multi-dimensional array to Core ML and Core ML will tell us whether it's a positive review or whether it's a negative review. So uh, this is uh, how this thing uh, looks. So you have on one hand, let's say for a Harry Potter, uh, you have the positive reviews, and then on the other, uh, on the other image we have uh, negative uh, reviews. So uh, you can uh, do this with uh, Core ML. Uh, there are a few limitations. Uh, the first one, obviously, is that it's only available on iOS. And uh, if you want to do multi-platform, you cannot do this. Uh, also, uh, there are other limitations. So uh, Core ML is not a machine learning framework itself. So it's just uh, this glue that connects uh, these two different parts, but it doesn't learn along the way. So for example, if I have a music app and I want to uh, listen what the user uh, music preferences are and based on that to give him recommendations. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot do this with uh, Core ML because it doesn't learn along the way. It just learns uh, how it's trained before you uh, make the app uh, to the App Store. So it's a pre-trained uh, model. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, yeah, it's a really nice framework. It works offline. So uh, you don't have to depend on an internet connection. Uh, but this is only the first version of the framework, so probably we will see a lot more in the future. So if uh, none of this works, uh, 
none of these previous frameworks work. Uh, you can always do this uh, by yourself. So, as I've mentioned, as I've mentioned, it's really an expensive task, but uh, for smaller things, uh, you can accomplish this. And uh, the NS linguistic tagger from uh, Apple is a good starting pro point. So uh, this is something that uh, extracts words, sentences, phrases, or even names. So for example, if you have a text that includes uh, names and surnames, let's say Tim Cook, uh, you can tell to the linguistic tagger to extract those uh, names uh, completely. So you want this as a full name as a Tim Cook, uh, and uh, this is can be done uh, with a linguistic tagger. And uh, also, uh, what else you can do? You can do uh, lemmatization. So uh, lemma is uh, multiple words of, uh, multiple versions of one word handled as one word. So if we have the word uh, do, we have uh, other versions like does, did, uh, doing, and uh, similar. And uh, in a text, uh, we don't care about the syntax, we care about the semantics. So the lemmatized version will be do. So we know this uh, word, what this word means, and we want all the different versions to be handled the same way. So you can do this uh, with the linguistic tagger. Uh, and uh, let's say I, I did some uh, example uh, with a post from my blog. Uh, so you can see it on my blog. So you can extract keywords uh, based uh, on how important is a word in a document. So this is this uh, TF-IDF algorithm, uh, which actually uh, counts how many times a word appears in a document. That's the term frequency part, the first part of this algorithm. But uh, since uh, there are words which appear a lot in documents, but they don't add to the value of the document, like for example, uh, if I use so a lot or like a lot, they are not important for the uh, text. They are just... Uh, additions, small additions to, to the sentences. Uh, and we want to diminish those words. Uh, and that's why we have inverse document frequency, which is uh, how many uh, times a word appears in other documents. So uh, when you compute those, you diminish those uh, frequent words. And uh, you, have, you uh, get uh, weight factors for every word. And when you have those uh, weight factors, you know how important is the word to a paragraph, and you can sort them out, and you you have a you have your keywords for for a given text. So you can use this to provide keywords. Uh, okay, uh, and last thing I want to talk about today is uh, multi-language support. Uh, what I've uh, talked so far was mostly about English language. And uh, we know in order to have a massive adoption of conversational interfaces, uh, we'll need to make them available in every language. Uh, and currently, the support is uh, not that good for, for the other languages. And uh, the biggest problem is that uh, there is not enough data. So we need uh, to tag the speech, to uh, read as many sentences as possible, so uh, the algorithms can start learning uh, and doing transcription and natural language understanding in other languages. So in order to solve this problem, uh, Mozilla started a project which is uh, completely open sourced. Uh, it's called uh, Common Voice. And uh, here you can donate your voice so the first version is in English. Uh, you can say something like a sentence. Uh, it's written, you just record, tap to record, and then you say the sentence, and it's saved on a server. And you can also validate what the others uh, have said. And there is a, this listen section, and you can hear a sentence and say, ah, this is OK. I will mark this as true. This is not OK, and I will not mark this as true. And uh, the engine then learns over time and starts recognizing, uh, uh, starts doing uh, speech recognition. 
uh, and uh, this is completely open source. Uh, it's available under the Creative Commons license. Uh, we took it for uh, Macedonian language uh, and uh, created a web application based on this source code. You just need to make it look the same way and uh, uh, add the license there of Mozilla. And then you can collect all this data and uh, you can start natural language understanding and recognition in your language. So I've tried to find one for Polish language, but I couldn't find. So uh, if someone is interested, they can just grab this and uh, launch a website. And uh, it will be, uh, you will help a lot in the understanding of uh, the Pol Polish language, uh, it will be easier understood by computers. You can then use all these frameworks uh, and uh, you can really provide uh, such interface in uh, Polish language. So uh, thanks everyone for uh, your attention. Uh, do you have any questions? So why is it so hard to add Polish language to Siri? Uh, Polish language is actually available in Siri, but the quality is not that good. And uh, with Siri, uh, you, you, as I've mentioned, you're pretty restricted. You cannot do anything that you want. So uh, the biggest problem is the data. Uh, that's what uh, you don't have uh, many examples to provide quality natural language analysis and understanding and everything else. Because if you look at it from Apple's perspective, they have, they are everywhere in a lot of countries uh, and uh, they need a lot of infrastructure to do this, uh, to make this work for every language. And uh, for example, uh, Macedonian language is not even uh, available uh, in Siri, uh, which cuts some market already. Uh, they are focused more on the really uh, mainstream languages. So English is, uh, has excellent support, but still there is a room for improvement. I know that German works okay, so uh, they are more focused now to the bigger countries. When they solve this problem, they will probably do this for everyone, but uh, currently it's, uh, it's not on the required level. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, good talk. Uh, about CoreML model, do I need to embed this inside my app or can I put this online? I knew uh, you told that it's part of the Xcode build process, so probably uh, not, but maybe partially I can distribute partially my model to the server and download it on the fly. Uh, the problem with this is uh, the interface. So when you integrate it in your app, uh, it generates uh, an interface. So if you want to change this uh, interface, so there are ways I've read on some blogs uh, that you can hack this. So take the compiled version of uh, your core ML model and uh, update it uh, at some point. But the problem with this is that uh, if you want to change something, if you want to change the interface, you will immediately crash your application. So currently core ML is not intended to be updatable uh, online. And that's a bigger limitation. OK, very clear. Thanks. I've got two, qu two questions. Um, is this your blog uh, web page? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, OK. Uh, the next one is, where do you get the knowledge uh, on this specific uh, uh, mm, speech recognition? and? Uh, uh, well, uh, mostly by reading, learning, you know. Uh, this uh, started actually as uh, an idea within the company where uh, we said, let's uh, try to figure out uh, whether we can use these kinds of things. And then that was a starting point. And then uh, usually reading through the documentation. So everything here is done from reading the documentations of dialogue flow, of uh, Siri kit, of uh, uh, with AI. So basically, uh, yeah, I've tried to sh I try to share this uh, on my blog with some links on uh, how to uh, do this. And I'm also actually writing a book on this topic uh, that uh, with APRES that should be out probably before New Year, but maybe after. So I'll, I try to share this knowledge with as many people as possible. 
Hi. Uh, Hi. What do you think? Uh, what's the future of uh, speech recognition? Will it be processed in the cloud as it is now, or rather will switch to local processing? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, probably it will be a mix between both of them because uh, multi-platform will always be uh, an issue. So if you do this locally, uh, you limit yourself probably to one platform or either you make a hybrid engine that is in integratable in both platforms. Uh, but uh, I think the internet connection is not an issue currently because uh, most of the people have internet connections and uh, probably that would be the way to go because it's easier. However, if you have a local solution, then you don't have to worry about it after it uh, goes live, so you don't have to maintain servers. So probably it's a trade-off, but I would say that uh, the web-based solutions are currently more attractive to integrate. Thanks. Okay, my question is, would you like to talk about a little bit about the efficiency level when you uh, want to recognize letters? For uh, instance, for the for the spelling. Yeah. Uh, well, the efficiency is again not that perfect. So uh, when you do this kind of development, you uh, you have a lot of fun because uh, Siri or with AI or speech or everyone else uh, can completely misunderstand you. So when I was doing uh, a proof of concept application for the Swiss market, because I'm mostly working for Swiss projects. Uh, I was trying to say I want a ride from Zurich to Bern. And uh, every time uh, Siri uh, misinterpreted uh, Zurich with Missouri from the United States and uh, Bern with uh, the verb burn, you know, something is burnt. So uh, it's, uh, it's really still a problem. And uh, you have a lot of different factors that uh, influence the quality of uh, good speech recognition. So you have noise, uh, something might also jump in some, some other noise and to completely uh, change the meaning of the sentence. And uh, so the efficiency is still not that perfect, but uh, for use cases like adding products to a grocery list, uh, it works really nice. And uh, also, uh, this is applicable to any business domain that uh, has some knowledge. So it can be used in service centers where uh, the first steps of app support would be done by a chatbot because usually people have the same problems. Uh, did you try to turn it off and on, you know, stuff like that? This can be done by a chatbot. So that's, uh, that's the bigger place where I see this uh, is a uh, big potential because you can lose the speech recognition part you can focus only on the natural language understanding thank you uh, i wonder if there are any ways to get some extra information from uh, the sound so for instance intonation or if a given sound uh, wasn't a word but rather laugh or uh, uh -huh. i know the gender of uh, of speaker uh well uh, in order to do this with the solutions that I have currently, this is not possible. So uh, the speech framework, uh, this, which is the lower level of uh, Siri kit, uh, it only uh, accepts a sound and returns you transcripted version of that sound. So you cannot detect uh, laughter, for example. Uh, but uh, I think there are other solutions as well. So uh, there are uh, speech recognition frameworks that might offer this, but I'm not aware of those currently. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.